Hello, Uggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. In these episodes, I take questions from the user community. You can send a question to uh, Ask Dave, all one word, at ARRL.org, and that will come to me. I'll answer it either by email or in a video like this or maybe in the Ask Dave column in QST. All questions are welcome. Please keep them coming. So we're going to look at a question today that comes from a patron, and his Hugh uh, Jones, uh, Victor Echo 7, Yankee Juliet from Canada. And he is a patron, and I appreciate that very much, Hugh. A patron, which you can find at Patreon, dot com slash ke0og is a way that you can actually support the channel and help it to progress. Uh, YouTube is having viewership problems right now. TikTok is picking up a lot and so on. And so the amount they pay me every month has dropped quite a bit. So I'm getting uh, actually more income from Patreon than I am from YouTube. So either way, what comes into this channel helps me to get things or buy things and so on and bring them to you for a review. Now, Hugh's question is this. Hey, Dave, a question about RF exposure. If I'm using one of those magnetic antenna bases when I have a sunroof, okay, he's using what's called a mag mount antenna, and they're very inexpensive for two meters. Uh, you can get them for like 25, 30 bucks uh, through DX Engineering, MFJ, lots of other people and so on. And you can, they just uh, clean the roof so you don't grind the dirt into the roof. But just gently put that thing down on the top. It will stay there even though you're doing, uh, let's see, the highest speed limit in the nation is 85 in parts of Texas. So uh, it will keep that antenna there. You generally run the cable in through a door or something like that. Uh, in the doors, there's enough rubber that it, can compress enough to wrap around that coaxial cable without creating um, any noise or things like that. I usually bring my cable in in the right rear door because that's the door I open the least. Um, passengers, my wife and I will open the front doors. Back door, I'll open it to get stuff in and out, but that right rear door might be a good one to consider for that. Unless, of course, you're a uh, dine and dash or something like that. Okay, so he's using a sunroof uh, there, and it isn't a panoramic sunroof, so the antenna base can go on the roof of the car. Panoramic sunroof, I guess, is sort of like the, the Tesla, where it just goes all over everything. My airplane is like that, too. Um, the antenna base can go on the roof of the car behind the sunroof, or I suppose it could even go on the trunk. I was mainly thinking about a roof exposure to me, but certainly always want to be conscious of what's going on with neighbors as our members of the public. Now, again, Hugh, I am assuming that if you're talking a mobile, you are talking about uh, two meters. So, Hugh, I ran uh, some numbers. If you go to um, the ARRL and look up RF exposure calculator, you'll come to uh, something you can enter stuff into and it'll give you results. This has recently been revised. So I put the power at the antenna at 50 watts because a lot of mobile um, 2 meter 440 uh, rigs will put out 50 watts. I think it's kind of crazy because 25 watts will get you to the horizon, but 50 watts. Okay, the duty cycle, it's FM, which is 100% duty cycle when you're talking. The transmit duty cycle, I'm assuming you're uh, here transmitting for five minutes, then receive for 10 minutes, okay. The antenna gain, I put two, uh, two dBi, uh, because this calculates to um, against an isotropic antenna, and we're actually using a vertical, which is going to be about two, maybe three or four uh, dB. The operating frequency, 146 megahertz. So a controlled environment is you or the people in your car who know 
that they are being exposed to radiation. If there's somebody in your car who doesn't know this, then they are in the uncontrolled environment, which has tighter standards. But the maximum allowed power density is one um, milliwatt per square centimeter. The minimum safe distance in feet is 3.8, almost four feet. So <clears throat> if that antenna were on a roof with the sunroof closed so that the metal is over it, you're fine because you're shielded by the roof of the car. If it's just plastic, you're not fine, okay, because it'll come down in through the plastic. You might look at putting this antenna uh, in the middle of the trunk on your car. Okay, again, make sure you clean that because on the trunk it's even more visible if you have a place where it's scraped the paint or something like that. It'll be even more visible on the trunk. Okay, so um, let's take a look at an uncontrolled environment. So you're like driving down a, a grocery store parking lot looking for a place to park. Okay, the uh, maximum allowed power density is 0 0.2. 0 0.2, that is only 20% of the allowed power density otherwise. The minimum safe distance is 5.4 feet. So five and a half feet. Okay, now um, this is for people who are unaware that you're going by them or something like that. So if you are in an area where there's gonna be lots of people around you for some reason like an exhibition or something like that, or for example, you're providing communications for a, a foot race or something like that, there can be people fairly near you. Get that antenna up high so that it's above the people in the crowd. Um, or put a barrier or something around it so that people stay at least five and a half feet back. And then you're fine. Assuming, again, all the other assumptions are correct. Uh, what you might do if you're at a race, helping out with the race, try lower power. See if 25 watts will do. If it will, use that. Then you've got less of a potential problem. So anyway, I hope that answers your question, Hugh. Uh, I use the RF exposure calculator on the ARRL website, and you can too. So there you go. If you would like to help support this channel financially, you can do so by going to decastlercom support and looking for a way that works for you from a one-time um, something into the, into the channel funds for a video you particularly like, just do it once, or if you want to do it on an ongoing basis, either through Patreon or PayPal. So, there you have it, and until we next meet, 73.